I've got a question for you. Between these two games, which one do you think sold the most copies worldwide? I'm willing to guess you chose this one, right? It's only the biggest multimedia franchise in history, after all. Now then, we've established that this game sold more copies than this game. So, which do you think is worth more? There are certainly more copies of Pokemon Heart Gold in the world than there are copies of Shrek 2, yet for anyone who knows even a little bit about the video game collecting scene, you'd know Pokemon Heart Gold is far more valuable despite the fact that it sold 14 million copies in comparison to Shrek's 2 million. But why is that? Shrek 2 is far and away the rarer game, technically speaking, yet one of the best-selling DS games of all time finds itself in the upper echelons of the second-hand video game market. When it comes to video games, supply and demand are the primary factors in deciding how expensive a game will become. Pokemon Heart Gold is wildly expensive and has been talked about at length in the online space since it first released. That being said, Shrek 2, despite having lower supply, lacks the demand necessary to achieve that valuable status. Using our previous example, let's say I was a slightly, or rather much, larger channel. King Giorgio would have 2 million subscribers to its name, who like, favorite, and subscribe like their lives depend on it. These subscribers would listen to anything I said. Then one day, I decide to release a video titled Shrek 2, GameCube's Hidden Gem, and in said video I sing the game's praises, implore everyone watching to pick it up right away, and change the public perception of it completely. YouTube and all of my subscribers are convinced that this is a must-have game, and people start to buy it online and at second-hand game stores. Two million people, to be exact. Suddenly, there isn't enough supply to meet the new demand, and its price skyrockets. That's how it works in a nutshell, though it could be considered artificial demand since I created the demand through my hypothetical YouTube video. I increased the value for the game through media coverage. Now, just for fun, let's say I bought 100 copies of Shrek 2 before releasing that video, I start selling them for insane prices once people are desperate to get their hands on the game and make a fortune. That's where things get a little tricky, huh? It's illegal to do that with stocks, yet the secondhand video game market isn't regulated in the same ways. It's just the nature of the beast, although supply and demand aren't the only things that determine a video game's value later in life. Accessibility is a huge problem, older games especially. Games that no one even likes can have seemingly overnight success because of accessibility or rather lack thereof. Silent Hill Downpour is one of the worst selling games in the franchise, and now after all these years of criticism and hate has finally hit its popular phase. What was once $10 at your local GameStop is now pushing $90 on some eBay listings because collectors are preemptively picking up the game in fear of the day copies inevitably become scarce. Think of them like nerdy doomsday preppers. Silent Hill Downpour, ironically, is faced with the perfect storm of circumstances to climb exponentially in value. The game wasn't released digitally, it didn't sell well, it's part of an infamously expensive game franchise whose predecessors also lack any official modern ways to play without heavy compromise in the case of the botched Silent Hill HD collection. And the game infamously was released with so many bugs and technical issues that a patch is necessary to download to your console if you want to experience the game without extreme screen tearing or frame rate drops. A patch that is only available for download through an online marketplace that will one day cease to exist. This is a real possibility in the age where older consoles aren't continuing to support their online services. The PS3 and Vita online stores nearly shut down in 2021 until fan outcry made Sony reluctantly keep its doors open for now. Who's to say how long? Five years longer? Maybe one? If that could happen to the PS3, then what about the Xbox 360 marketplace? Hell, Nintendo just announced the 3DS and Wii U eShops closure, and I'm predicting a good amount of Wii U and 3DS titles are going to ascend in the second-hand market. Kid Icarus Uprising, Ace Attorney's two mainline digital-only games, Xenoblade Chronicles X, the three Fire Emblem entries, all of this and so much more will likely become far too expensive for anyone to justify the purchase of, anyone but the hardcore collector. 
This even has adverse effects on the first two generations of Pokemon games, all of which have definitive ports on the 3DS eShop, digitally of course. When these disappear, the physical copies will become the only way to play once again, and in turn will climb back up in price, following the wave of the eShop's death. All hope is not lost, fortunately. Gaming is bigger than it's ever been, and perhaps without the blessing of certain game companies, players have taken preservation into their own hands. You didn't hear it from me, but there are ways to play rare games like Rule of Rose or Wild Arms 5 that don't require selling your home or even owning a PlayStation 2. Welcome to the wonderful world of emulation. Despite the legality of it all, emulation plays an important role in video game preservation, because time and time again, developers either do not wish to, or simply cannot, re-release their games. Maybe it's not even available physically in the case of games like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which was delisted online for a decade before finally being put back on modern platforms. Digitally, of course. With the exception of the extremely limited run physical copies, I'm sure that will be a problem later, before it was made available again, emulation was truly the only way to play it, if you were unfortunately not around when it first came out. Same with many other delisted games like Capcom's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure HD and Marvel vs. Capcom 2, once again, digital only. Although, MVC2 was originally released physically without online back in the sixth generation of consoles. Good luck getting a copy of that in 2020. These beloved fighting games and their communities survive now only through means of emulation that has progressed to the point where we can even play these games online through platforms like Fightcade. Not all emulators are created equal, however, if you want to play anything past the Game Boy Advance, you won't really be able to without a decently strong PC. The same goes for graphical glitches and issues that crop up when emulating that aren't present in physical copies. That being said, it's a solid way to play in my opinion, despite its problems. Problems. Players are finding fixes time and time again, and sometimes go far beyond the scope of the originals with ROM hacks like Smash Remix that went ahead and added an insane amount of content to the original Smash Bros. 64. 100% free to download and enjoy, not to mention the fact that this specific ROM hack is still getting new characters while Smash Ultimate sits sadly in the wake of its final DLC release. I'm not saying Smash Ultimate is a bad game, I'm just saying Smash Ultimate doesn't have the piano from Super Mario 64. I don't mean to brag, but I've actually been pretty lucky thus far since I began collecting a few years ago. Between my wife and I, we have just about every piece of Fire Emblem related media that exists. From the games to their guides, we got Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn for around 80 bucks a pop. I remember at the time finding it hard to stomach spending that much on a single game, and now here we are with this $700 Cordelia figure. I'm also the proud owner of this gorgeous Silent Hill collection with all the fixings. I somehow managed to snag Silent Hills 2, 3, and Origins for 60 bucks complete in box. And I'm not talking individually either, I'm talking all three games for $60 total, including the greatest hits version of Silent Hill 2, which includes the extra chapter Born from a Wish. Of course I bought Downpour before the price jump and the PS1 original complete in box for just $90, although I find it slightly sick that just $90 is somehow a personal victory for me. Next we've got these bad boys, the entire Wild Arms collection, with their strategy guides, and I'm happy to report that I got each of these for ludicrously low prices. I have eBay auctions to thank for that. However, my favorite story from amassing this collection was when I obtained Wild Arms 2. I bought it online, packaged together with its strategy guide, and when the gentleman sent it to me, he included Train Tycoon for PS1 as extra padding with this handwritten note. I still keep it up on my shelf as it was was probably one of the sweetest interactions with an online seller I've ever had. Finally, the crown jewel of our collection, surprising nobody, it's Pokemon. Every DS and 3DS entry complete in box, as well as these original Pokewalkers. I just took this little guy to Seattle when I went to this year's SakuraCon, although my Ike cosplay didn't allow for me to clip him anywhere safely, unfortunately. Lastly, I've been dying to tell the story of how I acquired this copy of Pokemon Silver for just $5. My friend Matt came over to play some Pokemon and 
reminisce together as we are the closest things to Pokemon rivals you can get in the real world. While we sat, I found myself perusing the Facebook marketplace when I saw it. Pokemon Game Boy game, listed at $5 USD. Surely this was a scam, who in their right mind would part with a game like this for less than the cost of my regular Starbucks drink. I cautiously reached out to the seller, and to my surprise, it was a mother of two who just wasn't looking to hold on to her old games anymore. Her kids weren't interested, and they didn't even have a Game Boy to check if it even worked. Knowing the risks involved, I made my purchase, and sure enough, when it arrived, it was in fact a legitimate copy. All it needed was a new battery, which was easily replaced, and now I've been reunited with the first Pokemon game I ever played. Thanks a lot, random Facebook user. It'll be hard to get a better deal than that in this lifetime. I can't say that anything will change regarding the current state of video game prices. I'm always going to be out here picking up pieces and growing my collection. For me, there's nothing quite like flipping through the original manuals and experiencing a game on its original hardware. Sometimes I even bust out the classic game guides just to get that authentic experience. In a way, my games are a piece of history. I have memories and stories about each one. Perhaps this inflated market is only a phase that wasn't helped by the fact that we were all stuck inside thanks to the C virus outbreak. Or maybe we're on the cusp of a major breakthrough, and companies will make all of their legacy titles readily available on their respective marketplaces. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Thanks for joining me on this wild journey through the second-hand video game market. I'd like to say a few things before you go, however, mainly that you should subscribe to King Giorgio if you like me or the video. I've got more planned for the near future, but I'd love to hear what you have to say. What do you think I should do next? Should I actually make that hypothetical Shrek 2 video, or do you have a better idea? The best way to let me know is to comment below. Another good way to get my attention is by joining the King Giorgio Discord, a place for those who want to chat, participate in game nights, and see what's coming up on the channel before everyone else. It's a fun community for the kind and the courteous. There's also the King Giorgio Twitter and Twitch if you're looking for more of me on the internet. Consider watching a few of these videos. I think these would really help introduce you to King Giorgio, and are some of my favorite works. I'm not the most popular guy on here, but I'm always going to be the most real guy. No matter what, I'll be making videos about the things I like, so expect the unexpected. For now, I'm just gonna keep staring at you until you uh, until you do something. Ziggy! Ah!